Hi folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiator. So here we're going to look at an obscure weapon, or is it obscure? Well, um, I posted a link, an image, to a falchion, a medieval falchion, a replica of, made by Krieger Historical Weapons. And um, I posted this on the Scholar Gladiatoria Facebook page, link below if you don't know about that already. And it, um, it provoked a bunch of questions which made me realise I need to make a short video about this type of falchion. So, I first became aware of this particular type of medieval falchion, which is really a 14th century thing, although I'm sure there were examples in the 13th century and the 15th century as well. Um, I first became aware of them when I was about 16 years old, visiting the Musée de l'Arme in Paris, and they have an example there. And this particular example, I think, is either based on or heavily inspired by that example in the Musée de l'Arme in Paris. Now, What's special about it? Well, quite simply, if we look at this image here, the um, edge is on the convex or inside curve rather than the what people would usually expect of a falchion for it to be on the um, convex edge here. So if you notice this fuller running up here, the fuller runs next to the spine of the blade. So this is the blunt side here and the sharpened side is on the inside. So a lot of people when they saw this image said, why is the person holding the sword the wrong way round? And the answer is they're not holding it the wrong way round, they're holding it the correct way round, but the edge is on the opposite side to what you're potentially used to. Now this has some uh, important ramifications. People also asked, is this single-edged or double-edged? Well, fundamentally it's single-edged, so that the primary edge runs all the way up here on the convex edge here, and then it does run around the tip of this cusp up at the top, the clipped point. Um, but uh, on certainly all the replicas I've seen, and therefore I assume on the original in, the, uh, in Paris, it actually has a little bit of a false edge here. Now that false edge, what does that achieve? Well, potentially you could do false edge cuts with it, which we find plenty of false edge cuts or short edge cuts in the Langmesser treatises. Equally, you'll find it obviously with arming swords and long swords, which have two en edges. But additionally, it also assists thrusting. Okay, and I've pointed this out in lots of videos talking about swords and spears and bayonets and things in the past, that two edges assist with penetration and we love penetration on this channel, all of you do, I know you're all big penetration fans, it assists in penetration. If you have a square or rounded back edge, your weapon is more likely to get stuck in the tar target and it is less likely to penetrate as deeply. So, that edge assists with penetration of the point. Now, one of the great things about this style of falchion is you'll notice it doesn't only have a thickened section at the center of percussion for increased hacking power, and we'll come back to that point in a second. But in addition, it, because of the shape of the point, it still has very good thrusting potential. Not only that, with a tapered sword, which gets narrower and narrower and narrower to the point, you actually have a fair amount of flexibility in the point, so much so that certain types of um, sword, and indeed obviously things like rundle daggers, often have reinforced points to make the points stronger and less resistant to snapping if they're being thrust into male armour, um, or any other type of armour really, any resisting target or a shield. Um, but in addition, they reduce flex. Now if you reduce flex, again, you increase depth of penetration, okay? So if you want really deep penetration, you need a stiffer tip, basically. So, um, because the tip up here is a relatively short part of the blade, it is therefore stiffer, okay? So you've got stiffness for deep penetration, you've got width or breadth for uh, increased hacking power, and on that, I'll also note something about the central percussion and mass and balance, okay, um, and inertia. So with a falchion, when you have a blade which is proportionally thicker around the centre of percussion, what you would do, in, what you do is you increase the inertia, you increase the amount of energy being delivered to the target. If you have a blade which is very broad down at the base, but up here it's quite thin, it doesn't have an awful lot of inertia. It might be the same mass as this falchion, but because the mass is distributed differently, you have greater energy going into the target when you hack with it. Additionally, when you have a uh, convex or concave edge, it presents an angle to the target which essentially reduces the um, uh, edge angle and gives you a preferential edge geometry at the point of impact 
as well. Okay, so it has various different advantages to having a forwards or backwards curved um, edge and when you have a forwards curved edge you also get some of the benefits that you would get with something like a, a, a cleaver or a um, an axe whereby the edge is in front of the line of motion um, so it, it's a powerful chopper but talking about mass don't be under the illusion that falchions just because they're broad are necessarily heavy as i've pointed out in previous videos with my replica conyers type um, falchion or it's a conyers clooney hybrid um, a blade can be very, very broad, but very, very thin. Think about a machete. A machete is broad, but it's actually very light. And that's often true of these uh, medieval falchions. If we actually weigh these medieval falchions, very often they're actually not especially heavy, but they take the mass comparable with an arming sword. So you take a typical arming sword and you distribute that mass differently. Okay, so you end up with sometimes a very thin, but a very broad blade. So there we go. This is the Krieger Historical Weapons, beautiful replica, I think heavily inspired by the example in Paris in the Musée de l'Armée. There might be other examples that it's inspired by, I don't know. Um, but the important point to know is the edge is on the inside curve on the convex edge. And one other important thing to note about it as well. So not only do you have the edges on these convex um, faces here, but you have a point now this point, I would argue, is underappreciated in that that hugely produces, where I'm just pointing there at that tip, that hugely produces a concentration of energy. So not only do you have a lot of inertia in the end of your blade around the center of percussion up here, but you have a huge concentration of that energy around that tip and focusing that energy into a small impact point. That means whether you're hitting flesh, whether you're hitting gambeson or padded armor, or indeed whether you're hitting things like mail, less relevant to plate armor, but if you're hitting something like mail, it now means that you're concentrating a huge amount of energy into this penetrating point here. So not only do you have a penetrating thrusting point, but you essentially have a penetrating cutting or cleaving point here as well. So a very, very interesting and I think underappreciated type of medieval falchion. And indeed, I was asked the question here on uh, Facebook, if I had a choice of all the types of falchion to use in combat, which type would I choose? I have to say, this is a leading contender for me personally, because it has the cleaving power, it has the concentration of that energy into a small cleaving point, and it has very good thrusting potential due to the stiffness and acuteness of that thrusting point also. So I think it's a fantastic weapon that gives a lot of the advantages of many types of swords all rolled into one. I hope this has been interesting and perhaps even educational for some of you. Uh, if you're not subscribed, why not? Please subscribe right now. Um, very important to your uh, quality of life. And um, also give us a like. It makes a big difference to the channel when I see those thumbs up down below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you back on the channel again soon. Cheers, folks.